So we, so we will be moving to now to uh, some other forms of carbon. So we've heard a lot uh, about the, we've, we've heard, we've heard, oh, sorry. we've heard a lot uh, uh, about um, oxidized forms of carbon. And uh, the deep energy community that I have the pleasure to share with some my, my colleagues uh, are looking at some other forms of carbon, the, the reduced forms of carbon, st starting from hydrogen, going to methane, and potentially some small molecules and some even bigger ones. So I will, it's really my pleasure to, uh, uh, to report on the discoveries and the achievements that our community has done. Uh, it wasn't extremely easy when we started the work of this uh, community that is um, like in between uh, the extreme physics and chemistry uh, community looking at the very deep earth and it's uh, really a, 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 a very interesting topic. And since the molecules we are dealing with are highly energetic, so all the biosphere is really interested in this energy that is present in the subsurface of, of the Earth. So when we started uh, a decade ago, so there was this um, really interesting question whether uh, the generation of organic compounds uh, from the deeply sourced uh, uh, lower crust or upper mantle um, could be abiotic, so not produced by organisms. So something that we're really, we're really unfamiliar with when we started. There were some indication that it existed, so in many different locations, uh, but that really required some further investigation. So we put the assumption that uh, there is a possible role of this, um, uh, this or, uh, reduced forms of carbon uh, for um, prebiotic molecules, prebiotic chemistry, and also a fundamental importance in the carbon, uh, in the carbon cycle of our planet and other, uh, not planets also if we are looking for life elsewhere in the universe. So therefore, we aim to build a quantitative foundation to integrate those uh, reduced forms of carbon, those organics, hydrogen, methane, and higher organics into the global carbon cycle. Uh, this was uh, achieved uh, using some specific goals um, to address the quantities, forms, and movements of these organics uh, within the deep earth and, and chiefly uh, methane. So I will go uh, through a couple of them by illustration. So of course, we started uh, with uh, some field investigations. The goal of the uh, deep energy community was to look at least 25 uh, different uh, geological uh, settings, sampling in different locations that would be representative and that are listed uh, here with looking for biotic gases and organic species. So they were distributed and we'd, we've actually done a lot more than those uh, 25 sites. So looking in three different categories, so the Precambrian Cretans uh, in South Africa, as well as in the Canadian uh, 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 deep mines and also in Finland. And uh, I will show you some, some really interesting uh, pictures of those. So uh, the second category is uh, potentially the less spectacular ones, so that's the continental systems with many, many different uh, locations. So in Turkey, Oman, we'll hear about that uh, with, during this meeting in greater details, North California, the Philippines as well, and, and many others. And, and the third uh, large categories of samples that were collected belong to the oceanic systems uh, in the mid-Atlantic uh, ridge, uh, for instance, uh, the Cayman Trough, Southwest Indian Ridge, also in New Caledonia and in the Arctic Ridge. So I wanted to give you a little uh, flavor of what those uh, uh, field investigations look like because it's, it's a lot about science collecting samples that will be analyzed with the most exquisite uh, uh, techniques, but it's also a large human adventure like these co young colleagues uh, collecting samples in the mines in uh, Finland and also, so, so it's over, so the, the video is over, but I find it very spectacular uh, when uh, th those uh, very old uh, water samples were collected, they are multi-billion years old, and they are really r super rich in hydrogen that is bubbling uh, in, uh, when, they are, when they're collected, and some other gases that have been analyzed in quantities and also for the isotopic uh, characteristics. So I indicated that, so that we had groups uh, going worldwide and doing sampling some, some gases and some waters. So in a spectacular location like here in the Zambales of Hyolite in the Philippines, so a campaign led uh, by Down Cardes, or in Iceland, a campaign that was led uh, by uh, Shuei Ono, and also some less spectacular uh, field, field work like in Romania here, led, and, and uh, where it's potentially less spectacular, but the samples are extremely important, as important as, as others. So that's 
for the continental settings. And of course, when it comes to uh, expeditions that were at sea, like the IODP uh, expedition three, uh, 357, so led by Gretchen Free Green and the Atlantic Massive to look at the, the intimate link between serpentinization and life uh, that was led in, uh, in, uh, 20, uh, in 2015. So it's a much larger group of, uh, of, of uh, scientists and also involves some new uh, technologies like uh, this new uh, drilling system that was deployed for the first time at sea and to get some, uh, some spectacular uh, samples. So that was, that was it for what we've done in terms of sampling. So a lot of the samples have been analyzed. Some others are in the waiting list uh, and they are in the waiting list for some of the most spectacular instrumentation that has been developed uh, during the DCO in that case. So we, there were basically uh, three uh, spectrometers that were uh, developed to uh, measure uh, some of the uh, rare uh, forms of, uh, of methane in terms of uh, their isotopic uh, system. So here there is the, there is the uh, schematics of the methane molecules and usually we are looking uh, uh, sometimes just at the, the, the heavy carbon or uh, the heavy hydrogen in, the, in those in the water. But here with those, this uh, really new uh, machine that was really developed and postponed for this uh, community and for the analysis of methane, it's a picture and you will never ever see it again because it was after delivery, just before, before it was uncovered, so you won't see. So that really allows to, dis to distinguish between two different kinds of uh, methane molecules that have mass 18, so super high resolution in terms of uh, mass resolution. So some that have a heavy carbon and a heavy deuterium and some that have a light carbon and two heavy deuterium. So and I, will, I, I don't want to spoil too much on what uh, Ed Young will present uh, to, tomorrow, I think but we'll go a little through that. So that's the super high resolution mass spectrometers. And then there was also a support to a, a completely new kind of uh, instruments that allows to look at the, uh, the heavy isotopes uh, carbon. So that's uh, the, some, um, um, some tunable uh, laser spectrometers like the one here developed by, Shu oops, sorry. Can I go back? Yeah. Can I go back? No, I went to you, okay. So by Shuei Hono at, uh, at MIT, so where they're using this uh, tilde spectrometer to measure, uh, again, a mass 18 uh, uh, methane, but just the most abundant one of the two. And the third one is located at Caltech. I didn't want to put the one there. It was basically working when the DCO started, but I wanted to say that because of all this investment in new instrumentation, there will be also some new efforts and some new machines that will be, that will continue in the future and that are based actually on what has been developed during the DCO. It's this, uh, uh, that's the few, uh, developed by uh, John Eiler and Max Coleman, so a descendant of the tunable laser spectrometer that is uh, uh, embarked on the Curiosity uh, rover on Mars that is able now to take less than one mil uh, water sample, decast it, and measure the con its, co its quantities of methane as well as its uh, isotopic ratio. So on the picture, it's currently on the breadboard in the lab, but it, next year it will go at sea and, and measure the sample, uh, the methane uh, that is dissolved in the, in the, in the ocean. So uh, a third, a third uh, decadal goal of our community was to uh, use all uh, the experiment and theoretical um, dispositive that are accessible to assess the mechanisms and rate of free drug interactions that produce some uh, hydrogen, methane, and potentially higher organics, and in particular in the frame of the serpentinization reaction that produces a lot of, of hydrogen. So it's been done using a hydro, con conventional hydrothermal reactors by many groups around the world. So we have set up also some dedicated diamond and veal cells to tackle the kind of pressure uh, that is interesting for the, upper, the, the, the lower crust and the upper mantle. And also uh, some theoretical simulations, like the one here carried out by the group of Alberto Striolo and, uh, and Dave Cole. So where they're looking at the effect of the nano confinement on the dynamics and on the rates, how, how the nano sized uh, pores uh, change the reactivity and the behavior of the methane molecule and small hydrocarbons in particular. The, the, the last goal, obviously, of this community is to integrate all the results uh, uh, in the four-dimension deep carbon model, so through time. So here is a model that includes uh, input from uh, petrology, mineralogy, and also plate tectonics, geodynamics, um, where in which uh, uh, we, we could show, so that's an, uh, 
uh, work led by Andrew, Andrew Murdy, so um, uh, designing the amount of uh, uh, serpentine, serpentinite that is formed as a function of time as uh, plate tectonic processes, and there's not a ubiquitous distribution of those serpentinites uh, in, the, in ocean through time. It's mainly controlled by the dy dynamics of mid-oceanic ridges, and more specifically uh, by the slow and ultra slow ridges. From that, we could assess some principles for hydrogen production, and the movie that you, I don't know if it worked. Does, did the movie work? No. Yeah. yeah. So we, have, we, could draw through, we could have through time uh, the hydrogen production as a function of time, where we see that the hydrogen production is highly fluctuating as a function of the plate tectonics and is mainly driven by the ultra-slow uh, dynamic ridges. So that's the, really the foundation for future work where we can add up some methane and potentially some higher hydrocarbons as we move forward and we get better underst better understanding on how all those molecules form and I will come back to that later in my presentation. So just some selected highlights, and I apologize, I won't be able to show uh, all the, the nice work and achievement that have been done uh, by the deep energy community. I think that's a good summary of uh, the, the results that we get in terms of the, the origin of, uh, of methane in the different uh, uh, geodynamical uh, settings. So whether we're talking about ophiolites, hydrothermal vents, Precambrian shields, and sedimentary basins, where we have the production of uh, methane. In most of the situation, it's not a, it, it's not a a black or white situation. There's always a little bit of uh, abiotic methane and also some abiotic one, and because also there is the biology, microbiology that is interested in that methane, which is a very uh, energetic molecule. So ju let's just move on to um, how, how we got to that, those um, uh, conclusion. It's really by using uh, the, the isotopic signature of the methane gas using the, 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 the rare, uh, the isotopologues, uh, uh, that we could obtain uh, thanks to the, the instrumentation, the large major instrumentation effort that was done. So the way you, we used to look at uh, the origin of uh, methane was usually in this plot with the isotopic uh, signature of, uh, uh, of carbon in the methane versus the one in hydrogen and with two major fields, abiotic and uh, biotic one, including thermogenic methane and microbial methane with some strong overlap, even some weird points. Thanks to the progress that have been made, so we have a completely different uh, picture that uh, is uh, uh, explained in details in one of the chapter of the uh, Deep Carbon Past to Present uh, book by, by Ed Young. And uh, I won't go into detail into that plot. It, it's, it's an entire presentation to, to get through the, that plot and you, you will hear that uh, by Ed Young. It's much better. But my, the main message is that from, from uh, these uh, results, so the, it, it's a little surprising. It's not exactly what we expected at the beginning. So the isotopic bond ordering in the methane gas actually uh, traces a lot the processes, while the Buck isotope ratio traces both the processes and the source uh, isotopic composition. So it's a, it's a little different that we had initially uh, envisioned, and I leave it to Adrian to explain you that in, in detail during this uh, this meeting. So. Since we don't have that much uh, of abiotic uh, methane, as shown uh, in, the, in the previous uh, slide, so we realized that, uh, and that was not anticipated, it's, well, could be anticipated. So it's not that easy, actually, to produce abiotic methane from, uh, uh, from carbon dioxide methanation at, let's say, low temperature. This has been confirmed during the, the DCO uh, program by uh, Tom McCollum, so starting exp a serpentinization experiment with labeled uh, with labeled a carbon dioxide, whoops, with carbon uh, labeled dioxide, looking where it was transformed into methane. And it only happens in some specific situations where there is a vapor in the system and that allows us to go back to some hypothesis. So we've been to a major extension of what we call the fissure trap type reactions uh, in, uh, in water or in fluids, whereas initially this, that's a reaction that only occurs in the vapor phase with catalysts. So there's also, we've been working with a number of catalysts and it's not that easy to see which ones are actually working, but there are some good, we've moved forward, but we don't have the final answers. There are still a number of them that are highly promising and that are being explored. This was actually confirmed by the data analysis in the literature, because it's not a novel topic. So there's been experiments carried out for a de decades on that topic. So uh, Fang Yuan and Samuel Barbier, uh, took the data analysis approach of the literature 
went into uh, over more than 30 articles, get into uh, more over uh, 700 measurements, look for hundreds of parameters, and figured out that all the experiments actually uh, divide here in four uh, what we call the communities of experiments that are mostly dependent of the pressure and temperature condition. I don't want you to get into uh, too much details. And when we go to the production of methane, so we have those here that are, we could see easily that are, they are heavily contaminated. And the one here that produce a lot of methane, there are actually uh, some very specific experiments starting uh, with some specific uh, sources of carbon. So practically during experimental work, we don't really manage to produce that methane. So, which means that uh, there is a little bit of the abiotic methane, uh, but what uh, the, the, I think that the great discovery of this community is the discovery of those new forms of carbon in the subsurface of the earth, low, upper crust, low, uh, lower crust, upper mantle. That's uh, the ubiquity of these abiotic uh, carbon aceous components, components in a, a vast majority of the serpentinizing uh, environments, whether it's present day, so active ones, or past one. So here, that's an example uh, in, the, uh, in the Alpine Ophiolites, in the Apennines. Here, that's the example that Muriel Andreini showed this earlier today on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where here, for instance, we have large patches of these uh, condensed uh, forms of carbon um, at the 10 micrometer scale. And here, uh, these really small patches of carbonaceous uh, matter that require the most exquisite uh, technological um, spectroscopic method to, to do actually uh, those measurements and the, those are really great news. It's a real uh, road uh, to the synthesis of uh, um, amino acids and for uh, the origin of life at depths. This has been confirmed multiple, by multiple uh, experimental work from hydrothermal conditions to much higher pressure uh, using label uh, carbon at much higher pressure condition and we know it, we don't know exactly what those molecules are exactly, but they have a typical Raman signature with the various level of disorder that are due either to the pressure temperature condition to the exact chemical composition of that organic matter. But that's really a major discovery of this community and uh, it's been predicted actually thermodynamically in some different settings. So where is the methane, the abiotic methane gone? And so how do we, how do we get actually the methane uh, that is uh, abiotic. So there are multiple opportunities to do it, like here in those subducted carb carbonate carbonated serpentinites, one GPA for 100 degrees C uh, when the, the system is actually dry. So then there is a reaction that produces a lot of methane and there will be detailed on that topic uh, later during this meeting. Another way to do it is at mid-oceanic ridges, like here this work by Jill McDermott and collaborators in very high temperature fluids that are super rich in hydrogen that result from the fluid basalt uh, reaction. And then in that case, uh, methane is very likely result from a combination of thermogenic uh, sources of methane and the leaching of abiotic methane that are uh, magmatic in origin. And in all these systems, there's one molecule that we also find in most of the cases, that's the abiotic uh, formate. So how do we do this abiotic methane so that is, not, uh, that is not magmatic in origin? So there's potentially here a very uh, strong role of, uh, of the, 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 nano size, uh, the nano size environments. It's been shown here by this schematic. It's developed in the deep carbon past to present model in a chapter led by Alberto Striolo and Dave Cole. But practically at, the nano, at this nanoscale, the properties of the, of, the, of the molecules in the nanopores are completely different. And it's very like, and it's been shown, that it actually um, shifts the equilibrium of the methanation reaction of the, the, the methanation of carbon dioxide toward uh, uh, more methane in those, in those systems. There is also, so that's, that's one aspect. The other aspect is that because thanks to the Thanks to the, the, the evolution of the, our capabilities uh, to model the fluid rock interactions, um, the group of uh, Everett Shock at Arizona State University is now able to build some uh, really large atlases of the mineral rock interactions in the uh, magmatic and ultramafic systems, like in this, uh, in this triangle here, assessing the H2 uh, reducing uh, power of this, uh, the, this rock assemblage and how they can interplay actually with the, these really interesting uh, uh, results of the mechanistic experiments that are really aiming to, uh, to show what are the road to make those different abiotic forms of, uh, 
of hydrocarbon. And there is, the future will probably come from the, those two capabilities being able to look in details at multiple rock compositions. And there's really a lot uh, that is uh, about the reversibility of uh, those uh, reactions. So I think that it's been nicely uh, summarized uh, by um, uh, uh, Andreani and Menez in their chapter. So basically, and it applies to many uh, different settings. So basically what we need to do is potentially to look at what happens at very high temperature where hi hydrogen and methane are produced. And it's probably a lot about magmatic reaction. There is this really interesting zone between 200 and 400 degrees C where a lot, a lot is happening, reversibility, etc. Until we get uh, to uh, the temperature limit of 100, 120 degrees C, when then the microbes and the microbiology and the subsurface biosphere can take advantage of that and just reshape completely uh, the system. So that's for the future. And that said, I will leave you uh, with a, uh, a, group, a group picture of the deep energy uh, community during our last uh, meeting in Lac Lusa, uh, last January. Thank you. <laughs>